five thirty, but it, I believe it is actually six thirty because <laughs> my computer says six thirty, and it jives with what my phone says and what my clock at home says. So the clock in this room is incorrect. Um, uh, hmm. Oh, oh, this oh, could this be fun. <laughs> I think that was you. Sounds better. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yep, that was me. Sorry. Okay. Speaking of which, I should turn off my mic just in case. Cameron. Cameron, we just Cameron, called the meeting to order. You are welcome. I'm going to disorder. <laughs> So, Brandy, now that our fourth member is here, please do roll call. Uh, Commissioner, sorry, Chair Belize. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Wise. Here. Commissioner Brenna is excused. Um, Commissioner Muick. Present. And Commissioner Rothy. Here. And Council Member Liaison is excused as well. And then also present is me, Brandy Howe, Community De Development Director. Excellent. Thank you. That being the case, item three under the agenda is to adopt the agenda. Does anyone have any uh, comments about that? And if not, I uh, could make a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll move to adopt the agenda. I will as well. Motion from Commissioner Weiss. Second from Commissioner Rothy. All in favor say aye. 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 No nays. With that, um, we have meeting minutes from June 3rd, which was our special meeting um, for review and approval. <clears throat> reviewed those meeting minutes. I did not personally see any concerns with that. Are there any comments about the meeting minutes? I'll move to accept. I'll second. Motion from Commissioner Rothy, second from Commissioner Weiss. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm abstaining since I wasn't here for the meeting. Well, that's probably a good idea. Excellent. <laughs> Motion passes uh, meeting minutes from the 3rd of June. 3rd of June? Yes. Yep. Agenda item number five, meeting open to the public for any items that are not on the agenda for the public to speak. There appears to be no one present in the room from no the public online. and no one online. So that was easy. And we do not have public hearings tonight. No scheduled public hearings. <coughs> and we are to item seven. We're gonna break records tonight. Let's let's make it a- Randy, can you provide uh, comments on the staff report? I sure can. I will bring up the staff report on the screen so we can walk through it together. This is in your way, let me know. So if you'll recall, back in May, we started going through, it may have been April that we started this process, going through the um, zoning map and reviewing it against the comprehensive plan. And we did um, a review of the half of the discrepancies that we found at the May meeting, and now this meeting will overview be an overview of the, of the remainder. Uh, I would like to point out before we dive into the staff report, there was at least one property that you had asked me to contact the property owner about uh, to see if they felt like they would be interested in having their property looked at for rezoning, and that was at um, 7th Street North. I think it's 2242 or 20, I really can't see the address, but I could sure point it out to you. Um, it's, the, it's the one that was right adjacent to the 7th Street townhome site. Do you recall? Yeah. I can't remember which one that was. The one, oh, the, the townhomes that are the, over on seven, between 7th and 6th. It's 2264, I think. It's the northern one. Yep, yep. Yeah, so this one over here. Avenue 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about that. Um, so I did have a conversation with the, both of the husband and wife that came in to meet with me, and I talked about comprehensive planning and what the future land use map means in terms of, um, you know, potential future density options and how it relates to the zoning ordinance. And they were very glad to have been brought in and informed about how these things could impact them. At this time, they were uh, they prefer to not have anything done. Okay. So that. That is what they would like to do if that is what we would Good be willing to, to do. Yep. That's that's nice one-on-one um, -on -one contact. That's good for the community, I think, to do that when it makes sense. Yeah, I think it, it worked out well. It was, it was, it's a little tricky to find contacts for people because uh, yeah. it's not really published, but I was able to, to, to Google it, and it happened to be the right person, so it was very easy. Um, so moving on to our discussion of the staff report. So the next area is Area 10. And as you can see, there's basically a three three block area along Seventh Avenue that is presently zoned for single family, and the future land use designation is medium density residential. All of those uh, existing uses are single family, and as they are um, currently platted, they're sufficiently small that a higher density is not really possible until lot consolidation happens. So I think this site and some of the other ones for the future, my comments are gonna be kind of similar. If we really do wanna be proactive and rezone it, that's going to give the development community um, the signal that we are very sincere about wanting high density to happen here and we wanna have it happen sooner than later. If we leave it as is, um, I think we're giving them a, the other signal saying that we're comfortable with our current single family designation. So just a reminder, the existing uh, maximum density with the single family homes is almost seven units per acre. And with the medium density, it's between six and 12 dwelling units per acre. So the side by side of the existing and the proposed zoning are, or I'm sorry, the existing zoning is on the left and the future land use designations are on the right. Any discussion or comments on this area? Um, nothing from me. Do you have any sense of, um, you know, just down the street where the new, basically between McKnight and Third, that new development of townhomes that's there? Um, McKnight and Third? It's oh, the M and I townhomes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, just to get a sense of, like, do you have any idea what the dwelling unit per acre of that is? <sighs> Maybe that's. I'm just. It's that's a hard metric to visualize, you know. <laughs> and so I'm trying to compare it to something else. But yeah, I think I can find out if you let me take a look here. I mean, that's obviously a much larger property. I think that was a PUD, oh. I think. I would be surprised if it wasn't, just yeah. based on the density. Right, yep. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again. If it's, if it's easy to find, that's okay, I, I don't wanna derail the meeting here. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think we're derailing. I think it's gonna focus the conversation because as we go through these areas, even though they're different places in the city, it's still the same conversation. Right, right. Is that the Anchor View Apartments? Um, the one across the, to the south of the trail from the Anchor View Apartments. So at least here? Yeah. Yep. On the gateway curve, so to yeah. speak? Yeah. Okay, so I've got the area. Um, let's see, one, two. I'm not sure how many dwelling units are in there. Maybe you guys can count them while I do the measurement of the area. So there's four in each thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I eight, think they're, eight. I think they're, uh, I don't think the units are stacked. Yeah, it's just I one I don't believe per, they are. I think it's, it's one, one per, per plot. Right, yep, yep. But I'm not certain about that. 
I didn't do use the right tool. Boy, you have somebody watching, it's impossible to do it. <laughs> Looks like it's about 80, maybe. At least. Okay, so that's about eight acres. Okay, so that's close ten. to 10. 10 ish. 10 ish. Per acre. Okay, yep. So that. Maybe more. Might be on the high end of the 12. Yeah. Number? Yeah. I think 96 that, units that is what it? I just counted on okay. a quick run. Yeah, basis. so it's close to the 12 number then. And it's zoned MU3. Which is interesting. But it's, yeah, but it's helpful to, because, you know, I can picture what that looks like and to think that that's 10 or 12, let's say 12 dwelling units per acre. That's That's, that's dense. Yeah, it that's about as dense as you can go in that kind of configuration. Right. Where side Other side. than, yeah, apartments or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to start stacking them. Yep. Okay, well, thank you for doing that. Are those all condos? Yeah. They're like, well, I think, three-story, right? They're tall. Uh, at least two. I'd have to drive by. It's well, you should be able to see it on Google Earth. Yeah. In street view. I can't remember, do we have somewhere on 7th Street a welcome to North St. Paul monument or is there a gateway? Is there anything planned for us there? I don't think we have any monument welcome signs. We have wayfinding, and it would be probably just a standard metal sign that. Just like entering North St. Paul. Right. There's one of those on um, County Road B as you come in that I drive past every day, but I can't picture one elsewhere. Um, just for clarification purposes, M and I is MU3. Townhomes are permitted by right in the MU3. I'm not sure what the density would be, though. So we'll just assume that it was either a PUD or it was um, met the zoning. Yep. But back to our original conversation about what do we do with these? And maybe I'll move on to the next one. Yeah. So if we look at those three, what's the size of each one of those three that we're talking about in area 10? Okay, let's take a peek here. <clears throat> each individual lot, you mean? Mm -hmm. So Each lot or no, the... No, you got the three individual boxes. The boxes. How big are the boxes? So how big do, is each one of those boxes? to give us a contrast to what we were just comparing to. Well, if that was eight acres, she was measuring eight-ish. These are overall acre and a half. Two, like that largest one is maybe two acres, maybe. So the, the triangle in the middle is three quarters of an acre. Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're little. They're pretty small. So just eye eyeballing this, for example, yeah. I would think that like maybe four would yeah. be pretty tight. But it's basically oh. what's you know it's personally speaking, only two or three I houses. I would be in there. up for up zoning uh, those lots along Seventh Street because among other things, it's a transit corridor, and so the greater density that you have along a transit corridor the better it is for the transit route and the better it will be for uh, providing service to that area because, you know, more riders will probably mean more service. So 
given that it wouldn't be a detriment to the people that currently live there, it wouldn't change their tax base or anything like that. I, I would say along 7th Street at least it's worth upzoning that to something a little denser. That's my own opinion though. I'm, you know. Yeah, I'm, I don't see, I mean, I, I think my answer would be the same for a lot of these that, you know, and Brandy, you even say here that, you know, individually, <laughs> you're not gonna be doing anything different on any of these parcels, no matter what happens. It's only if, you know, somebody is able to acquire all of them or a lot of them that something could potentially happen. So there's not even, we're talking very unlikely that that would happen in the near future. So I, I feel fine, uh, you know, matching the comp plan for that. The other thing too that I th as I'm thinking about, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but remember there is that crest of the hill on 7th Street somewhere in that general area and it would make operations on 7th a little safer if you could reduce the number of driveways coming out near the crest of that hill, which would happen more likely if it were to be eventually taken over and redone as an apartment complex or uh, a condo complex or something like that. So again, that's, like you say, probably quite a ways down the road, but I think it could make the entering and exiting 7th a little bit safer were that to happen in the future. Jim or Patrick, any thoughts? Um, I I guess I'm I'm pretty I mean I'm able to be flexible. I think it's very important that we consider what the what the uh, property owners think is a good idea because I I really think it influences. Well, it's the, the, the optics are important, but I think more important is really what is best for the community. And one of the things that I was asking myself was, are there, because we talked about this with the land use plan, the projected land use, future land use plan says, and what our zoning map actually documents for current zoning, is there any legal reason we have to change the zoning map. My understanding was there isn't. That's also my understanding. Yeah. I'm not an expert in Minnesota. Yeah, you're not expected plan. to be the legal counsel, so. Yeah, from my experience, comprehensive plans are, are your future understanding of how the community is going to grow and change. Mm -hmm. The zoning is the implementation ac action that you can take in order to implement that it's not forced. If you wanted to make a zoning change, it needs to be consistent with the comp plan though. Right. And if right. it can't be, then the comp plan needs an amendment. So I guess the, the important thing that we need to consider, no matter what the piece of property is, is what does it do to the neighborhood? What does it do to property values? Things like that. And I think in, with the people that I've spoken to about such things, it's all over the map as far as what people think is reality. Um, you increase the zoning and potential density and a developer might come along and say, hey, I'll offer you good money for your property. And it might be a great thing and it might increase the property value. On the other hand, the neighbor next to it will say, oh, that's terrible. Now they're going to put in apartments next to me. So it, it really goes both ways depending on who, who looks at it and how they look at it. And, and changing the zoning, what the advantage, the, the positive that comes um, from that is for someone who would want to redevelop and it takes a step a time step and a money step out of their process. If they wanted to come in and build the, you know, 
10 units per acre or something like that. Um, it, it, if we change the zoning, it removes one step, the step that they would have to request a zoning change. So that's the only thing that, the only positive that we really bring to it that's very obvious mm -hmm. if we take action. I would disagree with that in that I would say that if we change the zoning, then that gives developers an idea, the idea that we are amenable to that, whereas if we keep the zoning as is, then they have to be responsible for looking at the property and thinking, you know, is this something that I want to try to buy two or three pieces of so I can redevelop it or not? And they probably would not be as likely to to do that if they don't see some sort of indication from the city that, uh, you know, that that might be a possibility. So, and I do, I do agree that I think it's very important to talk to the the local property owner uh, and explain to them the circumstances. But I feel like. 7th Street being the main street into town is a little bit different from being over on uh, on 3rd Street, you know, because that's not a, a major thoroughfare. So I don't want to ride roughshod over the, the residents. I don't see, personally, I don't see where upzoning that is riding roughshod over them, but uh, you know, like I say, that's something I, that's a personal feeling. And if the rest of the council feels like, uh, uh, you know, that that's something that we don't want to do, then I'm fine with that. But I'm just thinking basically, I, I'm thinking 7th Street from McKnight all the way down to 120 really is kind of a, a higher development area. Uh, because it is the main street into the downtown area, and uh, uh, you know, like it's already two thirds of it is already zoned for commercial or higher density. So, yeah, I mean, I, Cameron, I agree with you. I I said something very similar the last time we went through these. Um, But I, you know, I think I just get a little uncomfortable with, you know, somebody having, saying, oh, you know, heaven forbid somebody puts a par an apartment next to me. That apartments aren't inherently bad. Um, density is not bad. <clears throat> and it's something that a city needs to thrive. Um, certainly doesn't have to be a lot, but I think I would want to have more discussions with people that have that viewpoint because I think it's, um, it's a viewpoint that is, could be, you know, um, I, it's a viewpoint that I think is a slippery slope, I guess I should say. Um, density is not a bad thing. And the reason that North St. Paul is uh, in a lot better position now than it was 15 years ago or 20 years ago is because we have more people here now. And I think that's a pretty good, um, pretty good thing that we have more activity downtown and so I think there's smart ways of doing this. And you know, I, I still don't see any, we're not forcing anybody's hand here. We're not making anyone change anything. It's not changing any tax burdens. It's not changing really anything at all. It's um, you know, a signal that the city is open to, you know, in however long it would be, um, that we're actually looking towards the future and saying, you know what, this is a main corridor. We may want to have more people living along that corridor in 10 years or in 15 years or whatever it takes. So, um, yeah, I think it's, to me, I don't see any harm in just aligning with uh, what the comp plan is saying. We're not 
it's not forcing anybody to do anything they don't want to do. So I think I hear three, three of the four of you kind of in agreement that this is eliminating a procedural step by us taking this action to demonstrate the, our, our support of our comp plan. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay, so this number 10, we're marking for potential rezoning. Area 10, okay. Let's move on to area 11, which is the next block over to the east. This, this site is currently zoned um, R2, which is the mixed residential. And the comp plan is suggesting that it be upgraded to the R3. So this is similar to area 10, but it's the even higher density zoning, which would allow 12 to 22 dwelling units per acre. Which is likely um, more of an apartment type up to? I, I, it could be. I, I mean, I'm just trying to. But given the linear nature of, of the area, I don't know how. Yeah. It would be difficult. But yeah. you're right, that amount of density would probably be something stacked of some sort, yeah. but, but it would be hard to get. It's a very narrow piece of property. Well, so. I know, yeah. that's, why, that's why I'm looking at it and, yeah. and contrasting to, is it really practical to anticipate? I don't, I'm not. Just, again, I'm just, I'm just I'm not sure to, how they came up with the, um, sure. with the future land use coloring, because to me, the, the land, if you're looking at, yeah, right up on the right. screen, the land just to the south of it, that triangle is our, it's our two. Our two. Yeah. Um, so why why not make all of it? R three. That would be kind of my inclination is to make that whole thing R two, mm -hmm. and then the the previous blocks that we were on would be R two. It yep. is R two now. It's yep. Yeah. This block, this whole triangular area is R two, and yeah. the comp plan is suggesting just that one. And I. Part, part along 7th Avenue. I would be inclined to go against what the comp plan is to have that be. R2 feels like a more applicable, applicable and yeah. realistic use of, that, of those parcels. Although it probably, an R3 would probably provide the capability to do something like is across the street, which is the multi-level apartments. Okay. That's okay, what's well, across are, the street. If they're across the street from there, then yes, I could see supporting an R three. You could potentially yeah. do that then. Yeah, I, I'll go. I'll I'll change. Yeah, I'll change that. I'll I'll concur with what Patrick just raised. I think it's going to be challenging in our current environment to have any kind of apartment there that is going to be without parking. But right. to your point, this is a transit corridor. We are trying to promote alternatives to the single occupancy vehicles. So I'm, it, it sounds like there's support. Likely, but they could do underground parking there. Sure. So, and then have them come out on the, the alley or something like that. I, like I say, I don't, I'm sure that that's probably not as likely to happen in North St. Paul as it would be in some other communities, but it doesn't preclude them having parking. Well, in 22 units is the max. I mean, 12 to 22 is what the zoning would be uh, permissible for. And I'm just thinking, I wonder how those use tables. I think it's also just a... So the way that it's written, it's um, you have to have at least... 1980. Boy, that doesn't even seem. That that's going to limit you right there, and how many units you can put in there. So there's there's no mandate as to you have to fit within those density um, ranges. You're you're going to be limited by the acreage on your site. So I guess if if the if the developer has the uh, creativity and the market can support it. For something larger? I'm good with 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. As you've proposed, Randy. Mm -hmm. I'm not proposing. Or I'm, mm -hmm. I'm taking cues from you guys. 
It is merely describing. <laughs> as you have out, as it has been outlined in the diagram for <laughs> the comp plan. How's oh, my that? screen sharing paused. What's going on? Okay. I think it's it's also just helpful, you know. I, mean, I don't know if symbolically is the right word, but you know, like this is the main corridor coming into town, so. Mm -hmm. That in and of itself may not really make a whole lot of sense, but I think, you know, looking 30 years down the line or whatever, I think it's it's pushing that the story that you know makes makes sense to me. So I, I think maybe it's a piece of what could happen at some point. Maybe not the whole, you know. But it's, I think uh, you could transition that number number 11 area 11 to R3, leave the area behind at R2. And if somebody wanted to come and redevelop, there are always options, shall we say. Oh, sure. Different ways of doing it. Yeah. And they'd have to buy yeah, it one. I think we could definitely... Six, seven, uh, ten, ten properties. Probably uh, evaluate in a manner that would be... I, I think what you're saying is that there there's logic behind it if they wanted to grab some of those other parcels and do a larger development. Um, okay, so area 10 and 11, we're proposing to, to upzone. Um, area 12 is between 1st Street and Helen Street, and also 3rd Avenue and 2nd Avenue. The existing zoning a single family and the proposed um, future land use is medium density residential, which would be the R2. So again, this is another upzone. It's already it's adjacent to um, higher density zoning. And this, this site seems like a more another logical option um, for up, up and the, zoning. And those other triangular parcels we were just talking about are right across the street, so, and that's all already R2 as well. So, yep. so it, it's bringing consistency to the map as well. Yep. yep. Yeah. Makes, yeah. That makes sense. Well, let's put a pin in that one, and we'll talk about the next one. Which is just, okay, there's two, 13A and B. Okay, so 13A. So does the parking lot need to be rezoned? I'm, I'm trying to figure out where this is. Parking lot for the new apartment building and no, I think this is um, I think is it Helen Helen Street on the right side of your map? Oh, here we go. It's is Helen right? on the left. I think Helen is on the left. Helen is on the left. This map doesn't match. My map doesn't match this map. That's why I'm having a hard time. It's it's between Margaret and Helen. Um, yep. Yep. So you're right. That is the the Max Steiner um, parking lot. Okay. So 13A covers the parking lot for the new multi-use building constructed in 2020. Yeah, yeah. Rezoning is not recommended. By the way, I don't ever park. I didn't even know that there was parking. I didn't either. <laughs> I was like, I thought that was just for the apartment. That's insane. Same. <laughs> See, I'm confused because this map that was printed for me doesn't show it as MU3. It shows it as um, R2. Did that get changed as part of the apartment development? I'm not sure if it did, but... Regardless, the, the parking lot should be zoned whatever the the adjoining building is zoned, which would be um, MU1, I believe. So I, my recommendation is that the 13A should match the max yep. building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. 13B is... Has one little triangle that is it's like a 
parking lot mm -hmm. or something. I think it is apartment, uh, sorry, I think the apartments are just across the street, it's the parking for that. Yeah. Um, so my, my recommendation is we treat that the same as everything else in 13B, um, whatever the outcome of that is. And the recommendation of the comp plan for that is medium density. R2. Mm -hmm. Which is con continuing the uh, trend of increasing the density mm -hmm. pattern along. Near 7th Ave. Mm -hmm. Although I think we're pushing out farther, but with the current apartment development where Max is there, that um, I think that encourages density there along Margaret. So that starts to that starts to make some sense. Mm -hmm. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. Area 14 is adjacent to Charles and Fifth Avenue. And that is presently R1. For some reason that little, those three little parcels in the comp plan were, they were showing multifamily there, which is kind of a weird, it, just those. <laughs> well, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure that there's a house there at the southwest corner of Charles and, and Fourth, I think, that, mm -hmm. that, that is like a duplex or maybe even a triplex. Because mm. uh, I've noticed it's got several different doorways coming in from the, from the main street okay. on different sides. Yeah. So my, my statement here is that this area is a candidate for up upzoning, given its proximity and adjacency to the downtown parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know why we chose those three lots to be R3 versus R2. Would it make, wouldn't it make, I, wouldn't it make, I mean, does it make sense, is there a reason, yeah. Was there a reason why you'd have them be zoned separately? The only thing I'm thinking is that those three lots are closer to the MU1, uh, the downtown zoning, which... Um, may have some uh, implications in terms of, you know, typically you would want to have a transition from your single family um, and kind of move upwards in density as you get to more high, higher intensity uses, which your downtown would be. That's, so that's closer to your downtown <laughs> marginally. Whereas the stuff to the north of Fifth Avenue is abutting the single family just to the south. I, I would say from a kind of a visual standpoint, to me it would make more sense. It would make sense to make that the property on the north side of Fifth Avenue up one level to R2, and then the, those three lots uh, to the north, R3. That way you've kind of got a little bit mm -hmm. of a, like a, almost like a stair step. A little bit of buffer. The, and those three lots that are on the other side of, uh, are on the other side of what's really essentially a, a driveway into the parking lot behind right. it. And you've got the, the larger development there on 7th. So th to me, that makes some sense to kind of stair-step them, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. So you're, you support what the comp plan is suggesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other thoughts? I'm good with that. Yeah, I agree. So we're good with it, Esha? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fifteen A and B. Where are we? Henry and between Henry and Charles. And Henry. 
Oh, I see. Okay. A seems to make logical sense. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay, so what do we have here in A? It's zoned R3, so it's high density. I apologize for the typos. It wasn't catching that. <laughs> Oops. What typo is that? Uh, there's, I've seen a couple in this report so far. None of us are. Okay, so these are all single family, and they're in the middle of our downtown district. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and so our suggestion is to up, up zone to MU1. MU1. And that, what part of, what's down there? Is that kind of where we have like the auto businesses, the Hillcrest, I think is what it's called? Are you saying in 15A? Yeah, just what's in that part of the downtown. Street on the far left side there. It's between Charles, Charles. and Henry. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the, on the opposite side there, you've got the, well, there's that vacant lot that's up on the hill, mm -hmm. right. which is not in this, and then next to that, there's a barber shop, and then three or four residential homes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to me, those are kind of strange Let's call them leftovers, for lack of a better word. Uh, you know, they're nice-looking homes and all that, but especially if we get greater density downtown, I'm going to wonder how easy those are going to be to sell to sing as single-family homes in the future. So I just wonder if it would be better for their property owners even to have the option of you know, selling them as a single-family or as something to be developed later. Yep, that makes I'd sense. I'd be in favor of upzoning it to kind of to ME one come mm -hmm. around my the full circle on my argument here. Okay, and then the couple of blocks to the south of that are currently zoned R one, and we are suggesting that they be R two, which again is fitting with the trend that we've already established of increasing the density just to the south of seventh. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of that, you know, because we're only talking about, you know, a couple of hundred feet south of 7th, so I see that as being a, a natural area for a slightly higher density. Okay, area 16 is between 10th Avenue and 9th Avenue. So it's the next block over between Henry and Highway 120. Again, it's zoned single family. We have high density residential immediately to the north, and so the comp plans suggest R2. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Just moving right along. Here we go, the old National Bank site. What is going on with this one? You got two triangle properties. This is on the north side of 7th. Mm -hmm. These properties are owned by Old National Bank. The future land use plan suggests our MU3. MU3 is the least restrictive of the zoning districts. Okay. Well, remember that that uh, property up there on the northwest corner of that I think is uh, a senior care facility mm -hmm. so it's already fairly high density right uh, so I don't see a problem with going for a higher density for this area and making the use fairly unrestricted uh, let's look at the use table here quick So multi, okay, so that fits with your multifamily housing. Okay, so higher density. The only thing I think I wanted to point out was that your MU3 is the district where anything goes, basically. You can have your your funeral home, your auto body shop, your gas station, bowling alley, whatever, um, next to your senior 
housing facility. The, uh, there's, there's lots of opportunity for redevelopment over in that, that area between mm -hmm. 7th Ave and, and 36, the Gateway Trail. Mm -hmm. um, the Sweet Living and the bank are the most stable but caliber collision that what used to be Century, you, that's been there forever. Mm -hmm. And they do a fine business, so can't imagine that that's going to change. And apparently that Burger King is really, really does well for itself. Really? At least that's what I had heard years ago. Mm -hmm. I keep between hearing that, that too. Between that yeah. Burger King and Caribou, those two places, I have heard through the grapevine yeah. that they print money. Yeah. That's the reason. Well, that must be why the Burger King stays open is they're printing money back there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think the bike shop does well too over on the corner there. Yeah. It's a, it's a great location and it's a it's a high traffic. Bike shop would just, it's just too bad the bike shop couldn't be on the gateway side of the. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing, yeah. go ahead and upzone this one to ME3. Mm -hmm. Okay. Certainly the A. So, uh, no question about that. Well, what what I was wondering is what's the what's the current zoning of those two residences, which you don't have outlined? Uh, those so, two. Yeah, those the MU3 as well. Those are currently MU3. Yep. Okay. So the bank is kind of the oddball out in that. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to 15, 18 while we're checking, checking along. The bank may want to redevelop that themselves, you know. They could always put a, you know, a large apartment building on top of their bank if they wanted to. <laughs> they could. That would be an interesting bank use. <laughs> There's a lot of banks that are redeveloping right now because they have these large... Mm -hmm. Uh, parking lots and and uh, branches that don't really do as enough business and they can downsize their branch and sell off 90% yeah. of the parcel and heaven knows that parking lot there is not well used except what maybe on uh, event day Fridays mm -hmm. maybe and even at that it's so far down I don't think I see a lot I, I think really the only time I really see that lot full is when there's something big going on at the uh, uh, I, it, is that the, the VFW or the other one that's across the street? Oh, the American Legion? Oh, American Legion, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, let's move on to 18. This is uh, City Hall. So the back half of City Hall is different zoning than the front half. Yeah. And we should fix that. <laughs> so How in, did that ever happen? Um, the wasn't me. <laughs> in either zoning, and so they just did it. <laughs> Was but when the city hall was well, yeah, when the the, the done, zoning map they and the parcels the property and stuff too, didn't they? I don't know if it was replatted. I think that's the problem. Had it been replatted, the zoning would be not oh, that's strange, not bizarre. So, it, looking at it, it appears that the former small lots that were at historically single family, those were all zoned ME1, hmm. and then the stuff kind of behind the downtown buildings is the MU3. So I think that's why we have the back side being the MU3. So is there a reason why the front side facing Margaret is MU1 and not having that entire intersection of Sepala and Margaret and all of that area being MU3? That feels like the, just reading the description in the previous one about land use, it would feel like that's... I would suspect, not having been part of the comp plan, that the MU1 is, that's the district that's intended to be your downtown, your, um, your storefront type of building. And I believe that the downtown is intended to go up Margaret, so 7th Avenue and then up Margaret. It's, it's not exactly like R1, R2, R3. It's it's a different kind of... Uh, Char character. It's a different character of, of, of commercial-type development. So when I, when I look at the... When I look at the current and I look at the proposed, it still looks like um, 
Oh, got it. I, never mind. I was reading it wrong. My mistake. Yeah, I think we're saying that the backside of City Hall should be our MU1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the difference between the MU1 versus the MU3 is, is basically, you, you know what we mean by downtown. By downtown, there's like no parking. MU3 is your suburban type commercial development target and what, what have you. MU2, there's a couple of spots that I um, haven't gotten a full grasp on what we are doing with MU2, but there's so few of them in the city that we're not grappling with them right now. We're looking at things, it looks like the uh, planning office and the utilities are in MU1 and the uh, police department's in MU3, right? Yeah. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So let's let's fix it, shall we? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'd say so. Yep. Last one. Oh, are we done now? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, there's one more Almost. to go. But. Okay. Area 19. What do we have here? This is a senior. Oh no, this is the community center. The parking lot, and then the stormwater facility that serves Polar Ridge. Wow, this is weird. I think I'm going to disagree with our comp plan on this one. So the whole area is currently zoned MU3, which makes sense given its uh, what location. What does the comp plan say? The comp plan is, if you look at the screen now, yeah. it's saying that the parking lot and the community center should be single family. I almost feel like this was a mistake that somehow. Was, that, that's yeah. like a mistake. Be a mistake. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like a mistake. And then the stormwater pond would be parks, which... Which makes sense. Yeah. What's the building to the left? It's a volleyball facility. That's the community oh, center. The community community center. center, but what's at City Hall, the community center... Oh, that's a that's a utility building or something there on the corner. I think that's yeah for water. Helen and Seppala. It's a water pump station mm -hmm. or something. I can't remember. I'll take my little guy and I'll look at it. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's a utility building. Yep. So do we want to keep mm -hmm. it as is or do we want to add the stormwater area as Parkland, but keep the rest of it the same. Or I don't. I don't know. Is there really a reason to make a change at this point? I mean, what what's the what's the positive positive influence of making bothering to make that change? The only thing I could think of is if you delineate that as a stormwater area, it could help keep someone from thinking that they could redevelop that whole plot. But one would assume that they would probably go out and take a look at it and realize that they can't yeah. develop in a wetland area. I think that would be a real push. I don't yeah. think anybody's going to go there. I mean, I, I would su my suggestion would keep that bottom piece that it's that the comp plans are recommending a single family not make that change. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. I would be Makes for no sense. I mean, if there's a if there's a benefit to changing the other piece as a park for some reason, then great. Otherwise, I wouldn't even unless there's a reason why they want to make that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't, yeah. another reason is our, now that I'm looking closer at our zoning ordinance, we, we don't even address parks in our land use table. No. <laughs> um, we should at least allow parks in the land use table in the park district. Yeah. So let's, let's leave that one alone. Okay, well, that concludes the presentation. So I have um, I have us changing everything except for the last one to match our comp plan, which is nice and consistent in our decision making. That's good. Um, and I'm not sure that there was any there were any of the properties we've reviewed before that would be 
Correct. That we had said, oh, yeah, we should do that change. The, the last meeting was the yeah. exact opposite. We yeah. were going to do right. nothing. Right. And I think that that makes sense, too. Um, we're talking now about the core of the uh, city where change is anticipated, redevelopment is happening. Um, so I think, I think that makes sense in how we're moving forward. Um, next steps with this. Um, I would like to get your guidance on how you would like to proceed. We could do a letter of introduction to, to, to these individuals that own these properties and their neighbors, letting them know that we're proposing that. So if, let's just thinking forward, should we, should we decide to proceed with changing the zoning and, and go through the entire process? Eventually it goes to council. We, we go to public hearing, we get neighborhood input, we probably get neighborhood input besides that. Um, eventually it goes to council for a decision. Um, can I suggest that maybe we put it on a, I don't know if it's a workshop agenda or something like that. In other words, document what we have decided we think we want to do and then have some informal discussion with council about so the next, next step would be do a, a, hey this is what the planning commission is here's what we're thinking on. about doing we'd like some input because they will be the ultimate decision makers and i and i guess i'd like to hear what they have to say so if you could document on you know a similar report to what we just talked about sure i could do that um the thing that concerns me with that, the, this isn't a high priority project. Yeah, right. So I, I'm thinking that just because it's budget time and our oh, council yeah. meetings have been yeah. cut in half for July and August because of holidays, um, this may get pushed back until fall, early winter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we could do council workshop, get their um, input, and then bring it back here. Right. And then we'll go from and there. And then take next steps with community interaction. I think it's also important that we kind of express to the city council what our thought patterns were on this, why it is that we're saying the first almost dozen we're not recommending any changes, but we are recommending changes on the second dozen because we're looking at you know, the, the future growth of North St. Paul in the corridor and that's why we're saying that we feel like these need to be done here and they don't need to be done on these side roads where it's not going to have as much impact. Because otherwise, I, what I suspect is we're going to hear a number of property owners come up and say, why are you doing this? Even though we try to explain it to them, what our thought process is, people don't like change. Mm -hmm. And if we don't explain to the council what our thought process is, they're more likely to say, well, why, do you, why are you changing this when property owner XYZ right. says don't change it? Right. So. I agree. Okay, well, I will go ahead and get that on a future agenda of city council and report back with the outcome of that. Good. Sorry, I guess I'm stating the obvious. <laughs> Sometimes it needs to be done. Any other discussion on the topic? We're wrapping up our agenda pretty soon here. Move on to item eight on the agenda, which is reports. Yeah, I, the only thing I have to report on, we don't have any applications coming up for uh, Planning Commission to review. I've started to do a little bit of um, the very beginning of taking our a crack at updating the zoning code. So I've downloaded it and I've started with the introduction, um, intent and purpose sections. And so my, my goal is to take it in bite sized pieces as we have time and we have time at the moment. Um, kind of, I will go through and redline it and reorganize it as it makes sense in, in my head and then try to prepare a memo that explains as succinctly as possible what's happening <laughs> in the track changes version so you can understand the rationale as to why things are being mm -hmm. modified. So that's what I'm hoping to bring next month. Excellent. Is there a link to the current zoning code 
on the website um, we could uh, review between now and then. Um, sure. That, not that we would, but that we could. I, I have expected you to memorize it by now. <laughs> you don't know yeah, it all? Really? You yeah, don't geez. know it all yet? <laughs> uh, I'll have Chris send it to you guys tomorrow. I think uh, I'm trying to remember where it is too. on the website. I haven't looked at it. I have it bookmarked, so I can't. There's a lot. I can't find it easily. <laughs> yeah. It's probably under government. Oh, there's uh, yeah. If you go to government and then kind of over to the left, there's a city, comp plan. city city code is in big bold. What is it called? City code. Uh, city code. Am I? I must be. City code. It's in so the darker a, color. A menu at the bottom, if you will. Here, I can share my screen. There's commissions and authorities. There's yeah. city council is at the top. Code and of conduct. Proposed or, ordinances. I think if you just yeah, yeah, but don't click that. Click the city code. Then think right above it. Yeah. And then it'll take you. And then it's view the online city code ordinance or view the code here. Good question. Just click it. <laughs> Go to the one that says American Legal Publishing. Okay. And then you should. Are you are you at a website that looks a little bit different? Not not exciting. That's that's it. That's the entire oh. code of ordinances for the city. So then on the left hand side, you'll see a bunch of titles. Ours is um, Title Fifteen Land Use. And if you open that up. Um, Chapter 154 is the zoning. 154 is zoning. So there's two two codes in here that really need to be updated. The the land development code, which is our subdivision ordinance, mm -hmm. kind of needs to be scrapped. And so I've sort of taken a crack at starting that, but it's it's a little more challenging than I had initially expected because this is such a different community than um, than what I would expect. We're fully built out, built out, so our needs are much different than a lot of other communities. So, um, so it's not easy. Redevelopment mode, more right? Expansion mode. Yeah. So it's not. There's not a lot of places that I can just lift yeah. lift from, without a lot of, um, you know, consideration of whether it's appropriate for us or not. The zoning. So I'm working on that as as I'm able to, and then the zoning code I kind of moved up to a little bit further, faster priority, just because it's easier for me to to tackle. So those will be forthcoming. Um, I would expect that to fully do the entire code is going to take at least a year, maybe two. Yep. So and it's going to be incredibly fun. Like eating an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, you have to boil them for six months. And then <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So how does the, the stuff that we're doing um, and or does the stuff that we've been doing coincide with the either economic development or the housing and redevelopment um, on, either, on the things that are on their agendas? Are there things that they're working on that we should be aware of and or vice versa? Uh, so the EDA or the Housing and Redevelopment Authority? Um, the, the HRA meets very infrequently and their primary activities are related to the Student Built Housing Program. Are you familiar with that? No. Mm -hmm. Some of you are. Okay, so the um, the city has a partnership with a college. Help me on the name of it. Yeah, Century, Century College. Century College. There's a, a, a an instructor there that has been using our. Um, they're teaching a class on how to build houses in real time, and we're providing the land, and then and then they get sold. So that's that's what they're doing. The EDA is a. Um, a much more active group. They meet pretty much monthly, except for this month. It was uh, summer summertime. Um, they look at how to assist businesses uh, grow or, you know, retain. We want we want to keep our businesses here in Saint, North Saint Paul if we can. Um, they're the ones that sponsored the redevelopment master plan, so they were kind of the spearhead behind that. I think they had a lot to do with the. Sen the Sentinel Building and a lot of the other redevelopment activities that have happened, I think, without the EDA taking a, a lead role in that, we probably probably wouldn't have had all of that uh, development over there. 
So I just don't have the, the history of how how long they've been around and what all of they've they've done. But they're they're quite active, and you know I keep them informed of what we're doing, and I'm kind of the liaison to both of them. So there's not going to be an instance where they're going to operate on something that's going to negatively impact a group over here. You know, it's kind of helpful to have the same staff person in, as the lead for both of those. Yeah, cause I mean, like with, the, you know, just with the, the rezoning pieces, that there's conversations that they're having as far as attracting some of the you know, different commercial businesses in the downtown area where the things that we're zoning are going to add uh, potentially at some point in the future could potentially add population. To mm -hmm. that area, of which case, what businesses are going to be the ones that are going to be able to support that and or have the income you know, viable? And so, is there are they looking at that longer term tail um, to see what they might be able to attract into that area as well? Yeah, I do think that they are focused on on those key key points. They do realize that um, you need to have population density to increase the amount of commercial activity, for example. So that, that body is fully aware of how, how we can, the, the steps that are needed to get the kind of development that we want. The, the legal mechanisms for how that functions, like the, the zoning, for example, they probably don't really know how that functions, but, um, but we're working in tandem, so. We're all we're all moving in the same direction. We're just doing different different tasks to get there. I have no other reports. Reports from commissioners. How about you, Mr. Commissioner Muick? Nothing to report. Commissioner Rothy. Nothing to report. Commissioner Weiss. Nothing to report. I lied. I do have one thing I would like to report. Um, all right, I get to go last. <laughs> Uh, so the Park and, Recre Park and Recreation Commission is another one that I get to kind of oversee. I don't have to go to the meetings as often, but we are working on a long-range um, master plan for the Park and Rec system, and we have a survey out there. So please go online, um, take the survey, and give us your feedback on, on the Park and Rec system because we are we really need to know what the community thinks and what they want to see. So spread, spread it wide. It's in those... Um, uh, the newsletter that you signed up for. So you'll be seeing more of that. So, so do we sure. need to go and find a, an old version of the, like a previous newsletter in order to find that? Or is it going to be on the current? Uh, it might be on the current one. And it should be also be on the city's main website. If you just scroll down, it's probably in there someplace. Can you send us a link? Oh my goodness. <laughs> send the link. And I was going to send you something else. What was that? Code. Oh, well, the code link you just gave you just, us. You that just gave us the easy. code link. Okay. Mm -hmm. Community parks. Sorry, but there's not a web page matching your entry. So much for that. Something in Parks and Rec or Ups and Rec is a TV show. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous to search for things. You would think under park and recreation, there would be, the survey would be boom, right there. You can't, you can't take logic into account when we're developing web pages. <laughs> they continuously evolve. If, if you just go to the main site, it's right there. It's right on the main head page. I did, I went to the home page. You did and you didn't see it there? No. It's the, it's the, the first line of news and announcements. <laughs> oh, the park survey on the right side there. So, anything else, Brandy? Nope, that's it. Then, I would just like to make one minor comment. Um, I'm going to. Um, publicly tout the efforts of someone that I know very well who suggested to the city to put library only parking over at the community center. Oh, who was that? Last time, I, not the last time, two times ago, I was over at the library and they were all occupied. 
all those parking spots, which I was very happy to see that two, one, one, there were, they were being used and two, there were that many people in the library, which was encouraging. There were a couple of families in there and. It's a pretty, I think it's, it's heavily used. It's nice to see the library used. I really do appreciate that. It's a I great get library. Pretty regular. Really, really nice. Yeah. Well, and if you, if you learn the library systems, mm -hmm. they're so handy. Yeah. You can get whatever you want. Yep. It's, it's just amazing. So very good. And I will give kudos to the uh, public works office for fast response. Uh, on Monday, I called into the switchboard and left a request with the switch, city switchboard operator that they get someone around to fill a pothole in my alley, which is one of the alleys that the city actually controls and maintains. And it was done by Wednesday. Wow. So I don't know whether that's because the switchboard operator knows me by name uh, and knows that I'm on the planning commission. <laughs> or You probably whether, talked to Jill. Yeah, or whether it was just the fact that they were that quick to it. But either way, because it was one of those car tire threatening problems. Mm, yep. mm. So. Yeah, <clears throat> I had uh, the glass globe of my electric meter shattered by the hail we had wow. this past year. And I didn't see it until, you know, the snow had all melted off and I could see this gaping hole in the top. I flagged down a, uh, a public works guy as he drove past my house one day and I just said, hey, I'm not sure who to talk to, but I have this crack. It was fixed in two hours. So he had someone over there and it was done. I mean, it was amazing. They are, amazing. yeah, on top of everything. Really and they're doing some nice new lighting over at Silver Lake Park. They are, and they're also installing new park signs too. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. Those are nice. They're doing some work. Those are really nice. Yeah. I think that's one of the advantages of living yeah. in a smaller city. Yeah. You know, I know we get things here that, but like, I don't think in the six years I've lived here, I've ever lost power for more than a couple of hours, and that was because somebody ran into a, uh, you know, a power transformer mm -hmm. and knocked it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so far, you know, I sit there and I chuckle at the people that are re responding that Excel is five days out from being able to <laughs> reconnect their power and what have you. <laughs> With that, uh, would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Motion from Commissioner Rothy. I'll second. Second from Commissioner Muick. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>